The First Sino-Japanese War, Part 3. Status of Forces. The Japanese. Japanese reforms under the Meiji government gave priority to the creation of an effective modern national army and navy. There were special efforts in naval construction. Japan sent many military officials abroad for training and evaluation of the relative strengths and tactics of Western armies and navies. This is Admiral Ito Tsukiyuki, Commander-in-Chief of the Japanese Combined Fleet. This is the French-built Matsushima, flagship of the Imperial Japanese Navy during the First Sino-Japanese War. The Imperial Japanese Navy was modeled after the British Royal Navy. It was considered the best navy in the world at the time. British advisors were sent to Japan to train the naval establishment, while Japanese students were sent to Britain to study and observe the Royal Navy. Japanese naval officers learned the arts of gunnery and seamanship. At the start of the war, the Japanese Navy had 12 modern warships, with another protected cruiser added during the war. They had eight corvettes, one ironclad warship, 26 torpedo boats, or torpedo boats, and many armed merchant cruisers and converted liners. During peacetime, the Navy was based at three naval bases at Yokosuka, Kure, and Sasebo. When war began, they were divided into five divisions with three flotillas of torpedo boats. A fourth flotilla was added during the war. The Japanese had a large merchant navy, which at the beginning of 1894 had 288 ships. 66 ships belonged to a shipping company that had contracts to give the ships to the navy in time of war. Japan did not have any resources to get battleships yet, so they followed a doctrine of small, fast warships, such as cruisers and torpedo boats, with the ability to destroy larger ships. The Japanese naval leadership were nervous at first because they had not yet received the warships ordered in February 1893, especially the battleships Fuji and Yashima and the protected cruiser Akashi. They were a bit less confident than the army at the start of the war about how the war would turn out. Many of Japan's major warships were built in British and French shipyards. There were eight British, three French, and two Japanese built, and 16 of the torpedo boats were built in France, but assembled in Japan. We will now explain what the different ship classes were. A turret battleship of the late 19th century was the earliest to have guns mounted in a revolving turret, instead of a broadside arrangement. It was also supported by secondary batteries of guns along the sides of the main upper structure. Here are a few examples. An armored cruiser was a type of warship of the late 19th and early 20th centuries. It was designed, like other cruisers, to operate as a long-range independent warship, capable of defeating enemy ships apart from a battleship, and fast enough to outrun any battleship it encounters. They varied in size and were distinguished from other types of cruiser by its belt armor. These were thick iron, then later steel plating, to protect the ship, like on battleships. 
It had an armored upper and middle decks and a side belt. Here are a few examples. A protected cruiser was similar, but had armor to protect it from above, from exploding shell fire. When that developed, here are a few examples. A gunboat was a moderately armored small ship, similar to the later destroyers. It usually had two guns mounted in the front and the back. Here are a few examples. A torpedo boat was a very small boat armed with two torpedo tubes. Here are a few examples. An armed merchantman is a merchant ship equipped with guns. Here are a few examples. An auxiliary cruiser is a merchant ship designed for wartime conversion and were faster ships. Here are a few examples. The ironclad Fuso had four 240 millimeter guns mounted on the four corners of an armored citadel, like the corners of a box, with two on each side. It also had machine guns and two torpedo tubes, one on each side, like the guns. It was built in Britain as a smaller copy of the HMS Iron Duke. It also had a pair of 2.5 pounder guns to defend against torpedo boats. Here is the IJN Fuso. An ironclad corvette was both a steamship and a sailing bark. The masts were removed in 1895, though. It was armed with three 172mm guns mounted at the back of the ship as chase guns. It had six 152mm guns mounted on the broadsides, three on each side. It also had two 75mm guns that could be mounted on the ship's boats or landed ashore. It also had two quadruple mounted 25 millimeter guns and machine guns to defend against torpedo boats. They had a wrought iron armor belt along the waterline. Here are some examples. The Meiji government first modeled their army after the French army. French advisors had been sent to Japan with two military missions in 1872 to 1880 and again in 1884. There was another one during the shogunate which directly assisted the shogunate forces and Eiza Republic in Hokkaido. Nationwide conscription was enforced in 1873 and a Western-style conscript army was established. Military schools and arsenals were also built. In 1886, Japan turned towards the German-Prussian model as the basis for its army. They adopted German doctrines and the German military system and organization. In 1885, Clemens Meckel, a German advisor, reorganized the command structure into divisions and regiments. He also strengthened the army logistics, transportation, and other structures to increase mobility. He established artillery and engineering regiments as independent commands. It was an army that was the equal to European forces.
Just before the war with China, all men between 17 and 40 years old were eligible for conscription, but only those who were 20 and over could be drafted. Those that were 17 to 20 could volunteer. All men between 17 and 40 who were not physically fit or not militarily trained were considered part of the National Guard. Following the period of active military service, which was for three years, the soldiers became part of the first reserve and then the second reserve. In time of war, the first reserve was called up first and were intended to fill up the ranks of the regular units. Next, the second reserve would be called up to replace lost troops or be formed into new units. The National Guard were only to be called up in case of an attack or invasion of Japan. The country was divided into six military districts. Their headquarters were at Tokyo, Osaka, Nagoya, Sendai, Hiroshima, and Kumamoto. They each had a task to recruit a full infantry division, consisting of two brigades and two regiments. Each division contained about 18,600 troops and 36 artillery pieces when mobilized. There were also an Imperial Guard Division, which took recruits nationally. That had two brigades and two regiments, but only two battalions rather than three battalions in those regiments. Its strength at mobilization was about 12,500 troops with 24 artillery pieces. There were also fortress troops and that was six battalions. There was a colonial corps stationed at Hokkaido and Okinawa. There was also a military police battalion in each of the six military districts. In peacetime, the army had about 70,000 men. At wartime, it would grow to 220,000 men. There was also the trained reserve, which could be used for reinforcements, or formed into new brigades, which had four battalions each. There was also a cavalry unit, a company of engineers, an artillery battery, and rear echelon units in this reserve. They were to serve as recruiting units for the regular army. Japanese troops were armed with the 8mm single-shot Murata Type 18 breech-loading rifle. The improved 5-round magazine Type 22 was just being introduced in 1894. By the beginning of the war, only the Imperial Guard and the 4th Division had these better rifles. The artillery had 75mm field guns and mountain pieces made in Osaka. The artillery was based on Krupp designs that were also adapted by the Italians at the beginning of the 1880s. They were not state-of-the-art by 1894, but they were still good for the job. By the 1890s, Japan had a modern, professional, western-style army with good equipment and supplies. Its officers had studied in Europe and were well educated in strategy and tactics. At the beginning of the war, Japan had an army of 120,000 men in two armies and five divisions. China. Most people in the West believed that the modernized Chinese military would crush Japan. Observers thought that the Huai army and the Beiyang fleet would easily win. William Lang, British advisor to the Chinese military, praised the Chinese military, saying that, in the end, there is no doubt that Japan must be utterly crushed. The Chinese army. The Qing dynasty did not have a unified national army. Instead, it was made 
of three main components with the eight banners forming the elite. The eight banners were segregated along ethnic lines into separate Manchu, Han Chinese, Mongol, and Hui Muslim, and other ethnic groups. Bannermen in those formations got better pay than the rest of the army, while Manchu got even better privileges. In total, there are about 250,000 soldiers in the eight banners, with over 60% in the Beijing garrison, while the other troops were garrisoned in the other major cities. The Green Standard Army had about 600,000 soldiers, mainly used as a police force, and were not mainly recruited, and were mainly recruited from the Han Chinese. Its soldiers were not given any peacetime basic military training, but were still expected to fight in any wars. The third part was an irregular force called the Braves. They were a kind of reserve force for the regular army and were recruited from the distant parts of China. They were considered to be mercenaries and they got whatever training that the commander saw fit. They were made into regional units from where they came from. There was no fixed unit organization, and there was no way to know how many of these braves there were at the start of the 1894 war. There were other smaller military formations. One of these was the Huai Army, which was under the command of the Chinese politician general and diplomat Li Hongzheng. This was the fellow from the Emo incident again. This army was created originally to fight the Taiping Rebellion of 1850 to 1864. They received limited military training by Western military advisors, and they numbered about 45,000 troops. It was considered the best military unit in China. China had arsenals that produced firearms, but a large number of weapons were imported from abroad. Only 40% of Chinese troops at the outbreak of the war were issued with rifles, or even muskets. Instead, they were armed with swords, spears, pikes, halberds, and bows and arrows. Against well-trained, well-armed, and disciplined Japanese troops, they would not have much of a chance. Those units that did have firearms were equipped with a great variety of weapons, ranging from a selection of modern breech-loading rifles to ancient muskets, a few hundred years old. This would make a major problem with the supply of ammunition. The Imperial Chinese Army in 1894 was a chaotic mess that no general could lead successfully. This led to poor leadership from the officers as well. The officers did not know how to handle troops. And the older officers thought that they could fight a war like they did in the Taiping Rebellion against peasant rebels. Here is a chart of showing the days long area of the Taiping Rebellion. The army was also divided into independent regional commands. The troops from each region did not know or even like each other either. The troops also had low morale since they had not been paid for a long time. Soldiers were looked down upon in Chinese society and also had a huge problem with opium and other narcotics. The majority were drug addicts. Low morale, drugs, and poor leadership seriously reduced the effectiveness of the troops, which led to defeats like abandonment 
a very well fortified and defensible Beihai Wei. Logistics were terrible, and the construction of railroads in Manchuria had been discouraged. The Huai army troops, even they were a small minority in the Chinese army, had to do most of the fighting in the war. The Beiyang Fleet The Beiyang Fleet was one of four modernized Chinese navies in the late Qing Dynasty. Qing Dynasty. The navies were heavily paid for by Li Hongzhang. He was the Viceroy of Zili and Viceroy in Korea and created the Huai Army as well. The Beiyang Fleet was the strongest navy in East Asia before the First Sino-Japanese War. The Japanese were very worried about facing this fleet. They were originally especially worried about the two German-built battleships, the Dinyan and the Zhenyuan. Japan didn't have any battleships yet, but that was more appearance than real. Most Chinese warships were overage or obsolete. The stronger armor of the Chinese warships and the more powerful broadside were far inferior to the first line Japanese warships with their quick firing guns. This gave the Japanese a great advantage in a sustained battle. The worst thing about Chinese battleships were their main guns. They were mounted in twin barbettes, mounted in echelon. What does that mean? Our barbette is not really a turret. It is a gun that can rotate on a platform, but the armor is in a thick ring around the mount. The gun is fired over the ring. This is a British battleship of the time. The guns did have a thin plate around the guns themselves, but they were only good against machine guns. That meant that plunging fire from any gun other than a machine gun or exploding shells above the guns could smash them. The guns could only rotate on a limited arc and they could only fire on their particular sides. The short barrels of the Chinese guns also meant that the shells had low muzzle velocity and poor penetration, and were poor at long ranges. Tactically, the Chinese Navy went to war with very crude instructions. Ships that were assigned to pairs were to keep together, and all ships had to fight pointing towards the rear. This was because of the strange design of most Chinese warships, with their strongest fire pointing towards the back of the ships. The only fleet tactic was that all ships were to follow the flagship. This was because the signal book was written in English. Very few officers in the Beiyang fleet spoke or could read English. The Beiyang fleet was first created by the Empress Dowager Kixi in 1888. It was supposed to be the strongest in Asia. Her adopted son, Emperor Guangxu, took over in 1889, but Kixi gave him orders to continue building this fleet gradually. The problem was that when she came, she went into retirement, all naval and military development came to a drastic halt. That didn't stop the rumors after the war that losing the war with Japan was Kixi's fault. The rumor was that she embezzled funds for the Navy to build her summer palace in Beijing. The real reason was because of Emperor Guangxu's 
lack of interest in the military. Under advice from his tutor, the Emperor cut all funding to the Navy and Army. He didn't see Japan as a threat, and several natural disasters in the early 1890s were more important for him to spend money on. Here is the list of ships for the Beiyang fleet. Ironclad battleships, Dingyuan, the flagship, and Zhenyuan. Armored cruisers, King Yuan, and Na Yuan. Protected cruisers, Qi Yuan, Qing Yuan. Cruisers, Torpedo cruisers, Si Yuan, Quang Ping, Chao Yang, and Yang Wei. The coastal warship Ping Yuan. The corvette Quan Xia. Other ships were approximately 13 torpedo boats, many gunboats, and chartered merchant ships. 